Summit Teacher 7, Mr. Bear here. Today I want to look at Google Photos and how we can use this amazing app. Now, to find Google Photos, simply go over here to the Google Apps and click it and then click on Google Photos. Now, the good news, you can also find this on your smartphones. If you don't have the app already installed on your smartphone, simply go to your web store such as Google Play Store and the Apple App Store and you can then do a search for Google Photos and install it onto your smartphone that way. Once you've installed it onto your phones it will begin synchronizing all of your photos that you take with those devices to your Google Photos app and you'll be able to see them from any of your other devices. Now this is true as long as you are logged into the same Google account on your smartphone as well as on your other devices. So let's look at some of the features that we have here in the upper left hand corner you have the main menu so if you click that you have where you can see your photos as we're seeing now you also have albums so whenever you upload photos you can be adding these to an album you can also click on items such as if I wanted to click on some of these here as I've done here and then I can click on add and I can add it to an album as well next is the assistant the assistant is great because they allow you to create albums from photos that were taken during the same time and it can also rediscover days in the past. Here you can see that you can create a new album, a shared album, a photo book, a movie, a collage, or even an animation. Going back to the main menu, you can have what's called sharing, so you can be sharing albums, photos with others, and even allow it so that you can have other people add photos to your albums. You can have photo books here. You also have archive. Now with archive, you can archive important photos such as photos of documents, such as wills, receipts, or other important things that you want to save, you can archive it that way. You also have trash. Yes, it's true that you can delete any photo or album and it will be moved to the trash can. Below that we see shared libraries. Then we can get into our settings. We have help, feedback. You also have app download. So if you have an Apple or a Windows machine, you can download the Google Photos app and then you can begin synchronizing all the photos that are saved on that device with your Google Photos. So let me click on Photos. So let's say that I want to create an album and I want to share that with some of my friends. What I can do is I can click on the day and it will highlight or select all of those photos from that day. Let's say I want to do multiple days so I'll click on the next day and it selects all those. And let's get that one and let's get all of these photos and let's get all of these photos that were taken on that day. And so you notice I'm just clicking on the date there. And it's selecting all those days for me. Now if there was some photos that I didn't want, I could simply click on them and unhighlight them. If I didn't want an entire day, I could just simply click on the day and it unhighlights the entire day. Now with all these photos that are highlighted, it tells me at the top that I have 111 selected. Now I can go over here to the add symbol, click it, and let's click on shared album. And now I'm going to click on new shared album. And we see that it's creating the album now. Next we can give this a title. After giving it a title, I'll click on share and I can key in the name of the person I want to share this with. Now once I have the name up there, I'll click on the person I want to share this with, click it, and then I'll click on send. Now if I go over to the three dots, click it, I have more options. So I'm going to go down here to where it says options. And here notice that I have collaborate, which allow anyone to add their own photos or videos to this album. Another cool feature of Google Photos is the search. So let's click on search. Notice that it does group similar faces together. And I can do a search for like birthday, California, safari, or other things. But let's just type in something. I'm going to type in the word Dodge. Hit enter. And now it brings up all of the pictures of the Dodges here. So it found a Dodge truck. 
Even found a Dodge Ram over here. They found this Dodge Coronet. So it's pretty amazing that it can actually recognize what kind of cars are in the photos and bring those up for us. Let's see what happens when I key in Mitsubishi. And it found my Mitsubishi iMeve. Even found the instrument panel for my Mitsubishi iMeve. Another thing too that you can do is if you take a number of photos together one after another you can create what these called animations. So here you can see a number of animations that I made with Google Photos. So it'll find every Mitsubishi in all of your photos. Even if the word Mitsubishi is on a document it'll bring it up. It'll even bring up videos as you see here. And even recognize the inside of a Mitsubishi iMeve. So I think that is just amazing that I can always find a Mitsubishi no matter where I look. Next let's look for a Ford. And now it found all of the Fords. So here's a Ford. Here's a Ford Model A. Here's a Ford truck. Here's a Ford car. Let's do another search. This time we're going to search for a person. So I'm going to click on one of my sons here and then we'll click him. And now it brings up all the photos that have my son in them. I'm going to go down this list. As you go further down the list it goes further back into time. So I'm moving back in time here all the way to when he was just a little child. So here he is, and here he is in the car. So it will recognize a person even when they're very young. As you can see in these photos here. And even when they're not looking at the camera. Such as in this picture where we see Shalom looking straight down at the snow. So let's go over some of the buttons that we have here. This is the share, and then this is the edit. This is zoom in and info and then I can add it to my favorites. I can delete it and I can do other things such as add it to a slideshow. I can go in and download it. I can rotate it, add it to an album, add it to a shared album or even use it as a feature photo or even archive it. Now if I was going to edit and click there. So with the editing tools I can choose these different effects. So if I click on the auto, you see increase the contrast kind of deepen the colors there. It was kind of nice. There's other effects such as Eiffel, Metro, Palma. Now I can go back to Auto and here's more basic adjustments. I can change the light, the color, and even the uh, pop factor and that's the contrast. If I click here I can rotate it to any angle or I can even crop off things that I didn't want. If I didn't like that I can undo it by clicking on reset. When I'm done I click on done and if I like that I'll click on done and I have my new photo there. Now if I click on info right away you'll be able to see who is in the picture, when the picture was taken and even the time, the name of the image and the location of the image. Now if that was not the correct location you could click right here where it says edit and then I can change the location. I can even key in an address and it would find it on the map and put it there on the map for me. If that was not the correct day or time I click on edit and I can simply write in the correct date and time. Now it is possible that you can be taking photos with your cell phone and actually viewing your photos with Google Photos on your cell phone but then you log into the same Google account on another device and you don't see them. So what could be causing that to not be synchronizing? Well what we're going to do is click on at Google Photos, click on the three lines that you see up there in the upper corner and then you go down to settings and click it. 
and then you're going to be seeing settings. Now the very first option you see on the top there is called backup and sync. Click that and then notice the first option says backup and sync. That should be blue and turned on. If you scroll down a little bit, notice that it does say your backup device folders. So you could add or subtract folders from your phone to be backed up or not. And then the upload size. Normally what I do is I go high quality, free unlimited storage. So there's no limit on how many photos you can put up to your Google Photos. Below that it says cellular data backup. Now if you're connecting your phone to a Wi-Fi at home, it'll upload your photos when it's connected to Wi-Fi. But let's say you don't have Wi-Fi at your house, then what you'd have to do is go down to where it says cellular data backup. And notice the very first option says photos. If you want your photos to be backed up on your cellular data, then go ahead and choose on for that one. If you want your videos to be added to that, turn that on too. But just be aware that when you turn that on, it will be using your cellular data. So if you only have so many gigs per month, you'll be using up some of that to upload and synchronize your photos. Now the next question that usually pops up is that, hey, I've been taking up so many pictures that I'm running out of space on my cell phone. It's true that you don't have a limit to how many pictures that you can actually store in your Google Photos, but there is a limit on your cell phone. So how do you delete the pictures from your cell phone without deleting the photos from your Google Photos? Well, it's easy. Bring up the photo that you want to take out and then click on the three dots. You'll see a menu that comes down. The very bottom it says delete from device. Click that and you get a little message that says delete from device. Items will remain in your Google account. That means they're going to stay in your Google Photos and you'll still see them just as before but they won't be taking up space on your phone. So click on the bottom button there that says delete from device and you'll take it off. Now you have more space on your cell phone. Well that concludes lesson number six. Please click on thumbs up, comment down below because I love to read your comments and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much and bye bye.